Shut up, dogs! Hi, I'm Phil. Hi, I'm John. You're not John. <laughs> Why are you John now? I was gonna bamboozle that one guy. You ruined it. Edit that out, John. I'm quaffing this beer because we made a bunch of hot sauce and I can't breathe. So if I die, I want to go out and drink a beer. All right, welcome to a different kind of episode, perhaps. I am going to teach you a little bit tonight, but this is not necessarily how to make burgers. We already made burgers. I made burgers like multiple times, multiple ways. This is a taste test episode. And this, I feel like, is uh, we're targeting millennials, epicureans, folks who like to go to gastro pubs. So, our usual audience. Yeah, our, yeah, our normal <laughs> audience. We have three kinds of meats tonight. We're gonna try two ways in two different kinds of burgers. We're gonna put it to the test. All of us have incredibly complex palates here and are experts in burgers. So, we're gonna make these burgers two ways, different meats. We're gonna evaluate them using science. And the meats today are ground Wagyu beef. John didn't even have to correct me. I don't understand why they're grounding Wagyu beef. Like what the f is the point of that, right? Like the whole the reason is it's tender, right? But if it's ground up, who, who can know? Second is gonna be bison. I love bison. They're vegetarian fed. That's good, I suppose. And last is gonna be lamb. All right, so we're gonna patty these out and we're gonna, we're gonna make kind of like a typical American burger, but we're also gonna make what, what is one of my favorite burgers of all time. It's a place in Columbus, Ohio called The Pearl. And it's, it's one of the most simple burgers imaginable. They actually put no vegetables on it, which is crazy. It's tomato jam and cambazola cheese. If you're wondering what cambazola looks like, it's like a hybrid between brie and blue cheese. Look at that. Soft, stink of cheese. All right, so let's get patty in. I'm gonna start with our buff. Surely someone's gonna cringe at the inevitable cross-contamination that we encounter, but this is home cooking. You ain't gotta worry about anything, but you and your friends. I'm gonna cough on it the entire time because I still can't breathe. <coughs> Okay, so we got a pound of meat here. We're just gonna make two eight ounce patties. We're gonna try not to overwork it too terribly much. This is no different from any other beef I've worked with. Le boeuf. And I'm not trying to make any kind of like real fancy patty or real thin. Basically just trying to make something to fit on a bun. If it's cracked, I don't give a shit. Okay, there's our beef patties. I tell you what guys, not every Tuesday night we get to eat six burgers. This should be like an American pastime. Six burgers on a Tuesday. We don't need Columbus Day. We need six burgers on a Tuesday day. Bison meat is a lot leaner than beef. It's so lean that a lot of times it gets mixed with actual regular old beef because uh, it can be a little tough. Far less squishy. You can see there's just not as much fat in there. Even though I think what the package said it was 85.15, so it should be just like regular burger. All right, so smaller patty, but you know, that's okay. Here's lamb, natural, natural ground. Is the lamb natural or was it ground naturally? That's the question. It feels fine and it actually looks the suspiciously like beef. Look how weird that is. Doesn't smell any different. It looks fattier. Look how, look at those big fat globules in it. You see that? It's like much more white compared to the beef. Gosh, guys, I don't know. I'm sad I don't have American cheese to make these American burgers. I'll just have to settle for fancy cheese. All right, there's lamb number one and lamb number two. Gosh, I don't know if it's just like from drinking some beers or the night's going on, but this meat's looking a lot more similar. Like the more I look at it, the more it looks the same. Isn't that crazy? It is crazy. All right, close enough. So there's our burgers. So let's season them with some salt and pepper. Seasoning on both sides would be ideal, but it's too late for that. I'm gonna preheat the oven, 350, so I can bake some buns. Well, we're not, it wouldn't be scientific to cook three different ones in the same pan, because then they'll taste like each other, but I think we should do that anyways. Yeah, yeah that's just, yeah, that's just All right, so some of these I'm gonna cook in a non-stick pan. Some of these I'm gonna cook. Some of these I'm gonna cook. Some of these I'm gonna die. Ooh. I'm putting some butter in these pans to cook the burgers. All right, I got them like medium high heat. I'm gonna start prepping other things. Other things, other things. I'm gonna split all these buns. These are just whole wheat buns. Whole wheat. The whole wheat. I'm gonna use that bread knife. One of the rare uses for a bread knife. It's like as soon as you make fun of something, it becomes useful. That's my law of the kitchen. I'm gonna pop these in the oven. I'm actually gonna turn the temperature down <coughs> just to... <coughs> to warm. I just want to warm these up. We'll give them a toast at the end. Get these nice and sizzly. All right, back left corner is beef. Back right corner, bison. Front, 
Slam. I'm seasoning the unseasoned side with salt and pepper. That's it. See, we took the buns out of the oven. We took the buns out of the oven. We'll be back when it's time to flip. I'm gonna work on condiments. Toppings. It's flipping time. You can tell because this side's brown. <laughs> that nice crust. Not as nice of a crust. Oh no! Lamb's already losing. Nice crust. Pretty decent. Hey, that looks a lot better. All right, we'll keep cooking. Five minutes maybe. Maybe longer. I don't know. I got no sense of time. Cheese time. They're done. You can tell because they're done. This side is going to be Americano. We'll let that melt. Other side's going to be fancy. Alright, so this Amazola is... I left it out to let it soften. I don't think I left it out too long. Moldy bologna right on top. A little challenging to cut this, but I'm not overly concerned. Let that go for another minute. All right. So some people will say that people who put condiments or anything below a burger are communists because you're used to it being stacked up. Don't don't let those people deter you. So this is some homemade tomato jam made from my garden. The tomato jam is a jam made out of tomatoes. It actually shares some of the flavor profiles of ketchup. This has a lot of ginger in it, so I, I like it a lot. I'll teach you how to make it someday on the show. Oh wow, that cheese just melted right off. That's a bummer. We'll fix it in post. All right, American style. Beef. Amelie du fromage. Beef. Next up is a bison. You can see smaller patty. Wow, that cheese really melted fast, didn't it? Oh shit, that's the wrong order. Ah, oh no! And the last but certainly not least is the lamb. All right, and we'll hit it. The American toppings, a bit of lettuce. I have sliced red onion because that's what was available in my fridge. Arugula, I'm putting that lettuce on there. The first was dumb. This is Dijon, as we fancy. Regular ketchup. Okay, let's plate them up. Looks like this guy got two bottom buns. <laughs> okay, there we have six burgers on a Tuesday. Okay, so for each burger, we're gonna chop it in half first so you can see a nice cross section, which I'm f***ing struggling to do. Look at that, that's just like perfectly cooked. Here's our bison, again, very nice. And last is our lamb. It's not ham, it's lamb. Wow, honestly, wow. I'm gonna do thirds of each. All right, it's taste test time. Let's start with the beef, boys. Grab one of these. You're gonna get messy. Cheers. I think it's okay. It's delicious, but it doesn't have any cheese on it. Yeah, I got almost no cheese. That's the one I slapped some cheese on at the end because it burned off. All right, onward to bison. Mm. I think the meat tastes better. Yeah, the meat's way better. I was ready for the final. The lamb. I really like that one. I think I got more cheese in it too. Yeah, they're all delicious. My rank, bison, lamb, beef. Bison, beef, lamb. I say bison, lamb, beef. We agree. All right, let's do the conventional burgers. We'll chop these the conventional burgers up. And we'll show you. All right, it's a lot harder to hold these together. Here we go, it's the beef. Mm. I thought it was good. Very good. The beef goes better with a traditional burger yeah, topping. I would agree. Next up is bison, house favorite. Oh, I think I just like bison the best. That's definitely really good. Last up's the lamb. I like the conventional burgers better than the fancy one <laughs> across the board. Bison beef lamb. Bison beef lamb. I like the beef and then the bison and the lamb. Well, that's our show. <laughs> I think they're all delicious. I think that in that context of like, you know, frying up a burger, putting a nice toppings on, they're all really good. I don't think they taste that different enough to be like that excited about it. But you know, it's, it's a little different. It's good. You got any closing thoughts? Nope. My closing thoughts are that you should put fancy meat on a fancy burger and put beef on a non-fancy one. I just don't agree. I'd be interested to taste the bison on a non-vegetarian diet. All right, guys, that was fun. We're gonna smash the rest of these burgers. Did you say that's how you do it? Yeah, I said that like 10 times. I'm going to do it.